Bad parenting. A game that at first glance, I wasn't even sure I wanted to tackle, especially as a parent myself. But the more I learned about it, the more intrigued I became. And now that I've finished it, it's so much worse than I thought. This isn't just a game about a scary figure and jump scares. There's a real narrative about the monsters that hide in plain sight. The kind of monsters that live in dysfunctional families, fueled by neglect and abuse. So let's start at the very beginning and unravel the mystery that is bad parenting. The story begins as Ron, a small child, greets his mother as she arrives home from work. She works late hours every night and is always exhausted when she finally gets home. And today being Ron's birthday is no exception. Mum comes home empty handed, but tells Ron that Mr. Redface leaves a gift for children once they're asleep, prompting Ron to hurry to bed. Dad intervenes, drunk, and the accusations start flying. He questions mum, insinuating that her late hours at work are just an excuse to cover up an affair. The air is thick with resentment, and this argument isn't new. It's a cycle that Ron has been stuck in for as long as he can remember. But tonight, tonight's something different. Because tonight, Mr. Redface will visit, and the gift he brings won't be the kind Ron was hoping for. Ron falls asleep as the sound of footsteps approach. Mr. Redface enters the room, snapshots revealing more of his figure. And just as quickly as he leaves, morning arrives and in his wake, a box with a small doll inside. It looks strikingly similar to Ron, even sharing the same name, though one key difference is the toy's slightly bent neck, a mistake inflicted by his master who had created him with the power of magic. The doll suggests that they play a game, pointing toward the wardrobe where the toys are stored. But when Ron tries to open it, he finds it's locked. The doll quickly changes plan asking for some food instead, explaining that while he can't eat, he can feel everything Ron feels. Ron heads to the kitchen, grabs some food from the fridge and warms it in the microwave. And after he finishes, the doll, using his magic, refills the food. No matter how much Ron eats, the food will never run out. In what Ron thinks is another display of magic, the bottle beside him begins to move, consumed by something unseen. Even the doll doesn't quite know what just happened. Ron begins to panic that his dad's bottle has been broken and hopes that he's still asleep. But the doll reassures Ron, claiming that his master has taken his dad away. Ron checks for himself and sure enough, his dad is missing. Believing that his dad didn't deserve such a severe punishment, Ron asks for the doll's help in finding him, to which the doll provides a shortcut to where he was being held using a portal stored inside the wardrobe, leading him to an unknown place where his father is being held. At first, I couldn't figure out who this woman was or why she was there. After searching online, I found several people speculating about her identity. Some claim she's based on the game developer's deceased ex, with many pointing to the game's Discord server as the source of this theory. On the third opening, Ron discovers the portal, leading to a quiet campfire outside. A cat sits behind a desk with a pile of paperwork, acting as a guide for visitors to find their parents. Ron describes his dad to the cat as someone who gets angry easily, someone who hits him and slaps him. With enough information, the cat opens the portal for Ron on the far side of the forest. The children are here for the same reason, to find their parents. But unlike Ron, 
they've decided to take a break and play together. Ron steps through the portal and finds his dad. The room is bare as the dad shakes in a catatonic state, repeating over and over, please stop punishing me. He doesn't respond to Ron's questions, and with nothing else to do, Ron picks up the spell on the bedside drawer and... Ron wakes up back in the wardrobe to find his mum has returned home from work, late as usual. Ron explains that Mr. Redface has taken Dad. She questions if his doll is okay, much to Ron's confusion. Mum explains that Ron only talks about a doll when he's off his medication, inciting the existence of the doll as a hallucination. Ron seems to be unaware of the previous stories he'd told his mother, yet the doll was always a common link between them. Confused and tired, Ron returns to his bedroom, where he finds the doll floating in midair. Ron awakens in his parents' bed with his mother at his side, promising to take the day off work tomorrow and take care of him. Ron wakes up the next morning with his mum nowhere to be found. He searches the house, checking his bedroom to find the doll sitting beside the wardrobe. The doll is beaten and bruised, its neck bent in an unnatural position. His master had punished him for yesterday's events, as well as taken Ron's mum. He tells Ron to run, as his master will soon return to collect him as well, but is taken off guard by the spell that Ron had found the night before, claiming it's the key to defeating Mr. Redface. The doll opens the portal once more for Ron as he traverses the portal to the campfire in search of his mum. Mum can be heard crying in the distance as the children hide behind the truck. Ron peeks inside and finds his mum inside a room with her head in her hands. He throws the spell inside and joins the children as they duck for cover as Mr. Redface's footsteps approach. A bright green light emanates from inside as the lights go out but the door cannot be opened. He's left with no choice but to return home through the portal, hoping for answers. When he steps back into his room, he sees the doll sitting nearby, its form slowly fading. The trap had worked and Mr. Redface was defeated and the doll's purpose was complete. The doll urges Ron to return to his parents, who are standing by the front door, already deep in an intense conversation. Dad accuses mum of having an affair, throwing out accusations of another man and blaming her late nights at work. Mum fires back, questioning what dad has actually contributed to their family. She's the one working, carrying the weight, while dad refuses to find a job. Then, she proposes a divorce, and that one of them will leave the house. And if dad is still here tomorrow, then she'll go and take Ron with her. Mum slams the door behind her, leaving Ron alone in the silence with dad. But the silence doesn't last. He storms down the hallway, bursts into Ron's room, and in a violent fit, grabs Ron by the neck, lifting him off the ground.
In an instant, the truth snaps into focus. It was Ron inside the closet, unable to escape until he faced the truth of that night, how his own father had snapped his neck and left him for dead. Ron doesn't remember dying, not in the way he remembers other things, but the doll reminds him that he's always known in some small buried part of himself. The doll is Ron, his awareness of what really happened, his acceptance of the truth he can't escape. Ron has created stories, weaving together narratives to try and make sense of his reality. Each time, he crafted new versions of events, new explanations for the pain and fear he felt, all in an effort to understand. And each time, the doll played along, hoping that maybe this time, Ron would finally see the truth and break free from the cycle. But it's always been the same roundabout of denial. Ron creates, the doll follows, and they end up back where they started, until Ron can accept what really happened. Fourteen days of reliving his death. Fourteen days of searching for the truth. While his father had been hiding out in a cheap motel, grappling with the weight of his actions, haunted by what he'd done. Before we dive into the ending, let's take a step back and try to make sense of everything we've seen so far. Now that we know that Ron is, in fact, dead, with this new knowledge the events that once seemed confusing or surreal start to fall into place. At this point of Ron's birthday, he's still very much alive. His mum comes home from work late, as usual, and she's forgotten to bring him a present. However, Ron's disappointment is overshadowed by Dad's fury, convinced that her late nights are more than just work and that she's hiding something. In a fit of anger, Dad sends Ron to his room and we're left in silence, unable to hear the rest of their heated conversation. However, the events we'd just witnessed before filled us in on what we'd missed. Dad confronts Mum about an affair and Mum proposes a divorce, leaving the house soon after. Dad sits at the dinner table, drinking and stewing over the realization that his entire life is about to implode. And in a snap decision, fueled by anger and desperation, he decides to take out his frustration in the worst possible way. Ron awakens the next morning, completely unaware that he was murdered 14 days ago. And beside him is the doll he believes was a birthday gift from Mr. Redface, unknowing that the doll is a manifestation of his own denial of death. Ron even remarks that the doll's neck looks a little loose, mirroring his own cause of death. Yet the doll sticks to the story that his master made him that way, all in an attempt to follow Ron's story and hopefully discover the truth. We now know that this isn't the first story or the first loop. As the doll explained, each cycle begins on the night of the murder, with Ron reliving the same events over and over. Despite countless attempts, the doll still encourages Ron to try opening the closet, hoping that maybe this time it will finally open and break the cycle. But it doesn't, and so another story begins, with the doll faithfully tagging along. In the kitchen, the note from Mum stuck to the fridge begins to make a lot more sense. Ron's lazy eating habits become a lot more understandable now that we know that Ron is dead. She also reminds Ron to take his medication in hopes that he will stop mentioning the doll. And now that we know Ron's true state, the so-called magic that the doll performs is no longer mysterious. It's not magic at all, but rather Ron's fractured mind believing the food is never ending because it was never there to begin with. When Ron asks what else he can do, he shows a glimpse of what happened the night of the murder, as Dad drank himself into a violent rage. The doll plays coy, needing Ron to connect the dots on his own, but he isn't ready and doesn't understand. Ron searches for Dad, traveling through the closet to a sort of limbo, and here he's joined by other children 
who play and laugh together, seemingly unaware of why they're here. Ron passes through and enters the closet, finding himself in Dad's motel room. It's been 14 days, and from Dad's perspective, he's visited by the corpse of his child, tormenting him for the unspeakable actions he committed. It's late at night, and Mum finds Ron inside the closet. Now, this raises an interesting question. Why is Mum able to see Ron, even though he was murdered two weeks ago? We'll dive into that soon, but for now, what we do know is that Mum seems relieved to hear that Dad is gone. She quickly brings up the subject of medication, the same ones we see sitting on the dining table. It's likely that this medication came into the picture after Ron's death, meant to curb the stories he's been telling, and in particular, the repeated mentions of the doll. Mum asks Ron why he isn't taking them, but of course, we know the truth. He can't. Ron enters the bedroom and finds the doll floating, an eerily similar scene reflecting the events two weeks ago. In that moment, he remembers the face that choked the life out of him, and just as before, he collapses to the floor. When he regains consciousness, he's in Mum's bed, with her sitting beside him. She promises that tomorrow, she'll finally take a day off from work and spend time with him. For the first time in a long time, she'll be there during the day. But when the next day arrives, Mum is gone. The house is empty, and the doll lies next to the closet. Its appearance is different now, almost blunt in its resemblance to Ron's body on the night of the murder. The doll notices the spell that Ron picked up from Dad's hotel room and tasks him with traveling through the closet once more. Again, he visits the space in between and sees Mum crying inside a barred room. He throws the spell inside and the room goes dark. The fabled Mr. Redface, also known as Dad, has been defeated. And that brings us back to the present with a much clearer understanding of the events that have unfolded. Another day begins, but this time things are different. Mum is actually home during the day, just like she promised. She's back inside the barred room, revealed to be an interrogation room, as she's questioned by the police as to Dad's whereabouts. She doesn't know, but it's at this moment that Ron happened to throw the spell inside the room, revealed to be a motel card taken from Dad's room. It's just the piece of evidence needed to find Dad, to bring him to justice and move on. We see Ron among the other children, each of whom met their own tragic fate at the hands of their parents. But now, they've all found a sense of peace. Their wandering spirits, finally free. there's still one question we haven't fully answered. How did mum not realise her own son was dead? She'd seen him, spoken to him, and stayed by his side, all while his body lay hidden in the closet. You see, in Vietnamese culture, where the game's developer, An, is from, spirits are believed to only appear at night. Since mum worked late into the night, she came home to see Ron's spirit every evening unaware that anything was wrong. It wasn't until she finally took a day off, entering his room in the light of day, that she realized that Ron had never been there at all. 
for 14 days. Mum returned each night, believing her son was alive and well. And on that 14th day, she discovered the devastating truth. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found an appreciation for this game just as I did. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe and leave a like. I'll see you all real soon.